Hey guys, this is Language Study Gram. I created this channel in order to share my experience uh, in uh, learning and productivity. When I was studying in my first master's degree in Switzerland, in the University of Geneva, I have faced many obstacles during my educational journal. I was a student who came with a GPA of 3.56 out of 4 and I was like so ready for it. But then I uh, understood that it's not enough to be clever, you have to know how to take notes, what are the tools that can uh, improve your educational process, what are the tools and life hacks. I started interested in neuroscience and cognitive linguistics and um, this is a channel where I'm gonna share all of these things with you in order to enhance your and improve your educational journey and make it more productive. So this is the first video that is going to be on the productivity life hacks from the point of view of neuroscience. Enjoy! Okay, so the first thing that is going to increase your productivity is a healthy sleep. Usually people try to sacrifice the amount of sleep because they think that they're gonna do more. We tend to sleep seven, six or even five hours per day in order uh, to do more things, but this is actually a huge misconception. The sleep rates for the average healthy person vary from seven to nine hours if you are a teenager or an adult and from seven to eight hours for the elderly these numbers might vary but the difference should not be very significant lack of sleep affects not only our health but also significantly affects the productivity there are many researchers claiming that it affects working memory and our attention. Moreover, it affects our memory and speed of the decision making. There was one research where they actually calculated that the decrease of productivity cost a human $2,000 per year. Um, there are also several researchers on, that studied the connection between sleep and the and how it affects the brain. The scientists concluded that actually the lack of sleep is a huge stress factor for the human body and as a result, it reduces the neurogenesis in the adult. What is the neurogenesis? It is a process of creating a new neural cells in your brain and it has a connection with memory learning, mindfulness, and in some researches with self-monitoring. Sleep helps to cope with the difficult mental tasks. So the Russian proverb is actually genuine. Biologist Dr. John Medina wrote a New York Times bestseller brain rules. Experimenters try to understand what could start or accelerate the process of understanding and it actually turns out that the acceleration process starts if the students sleep with an idea. If in 12 hours after the first trial of solving the problem, students will not receive any supplementary tasks, then the possibility to find the rational answer would increase for 20%. And if 8 hours out of these 12 hours are sacrificed for the healthy sleep, then the results increase for 60%, which means that if you have problems solving difficult problem, then you have to go to sleep and that will triple your chances to solve the problem. Another myth is that in order to be more productive, we need to get up early. This is actually another huge misconception because what we need to do is to match our working regime with our sleep and wakefulness regime. Being an all is actually not a problem. The problem starts when you live not according to your biological regime. This actually, according to some researchers, leads to sleep deprivation, energy decrease during the day, 
and many different diseases. If you're interested in this topic, you can read more about it in the article of Melissa Lee Phillips about owls and larks, which is going to be listed right below. A professor from Stanford University claims that trying to fit the regime that doesn't match our body is a way to sleep problems. For example, if you are an owl and you suddenly decide to wake up in the morning in order to do the mm, meditation, you are going to force your body to do something which it doesn't like, which is going to affect your body negatively. There is another research claiming that people with different chronotypes at different time better cope with different and difficult cognitive tasks. And at different time, they are very good at showing self-control. For example, if a lark will decide to wake up in the morning, he will do successfully his meditation. But if an owl wakes up, decides to wake up, at the morning and be more productive, he will do another sabotage and go and surf some social networks. The truth is that night biorhythm, which is a tendency to go to bed late and wake up late, can easily be confused with uh, sleep disturbance. So before calling yourself a no, you have to make sure that you have organized your sleep um, time correctly, which means that you need to try to not sit in front of the screen a short time before going to bed because there are many researches on the relationship between time spent in front of the screen and the quantity and the quality of a good sleep. If you want to know more about the topic of sleep, I recommend you to read the book which is called Sleep Smarter. The order, Sean Stevenson, has actually a website and another article which is called something about 21 tips to get the best sleep ever, which includes the key ideas from his book. In conclusion, I would like to share some recommendations of neuroscientists on how to use sleep as a productivity booster. Number one, pay attention to the quality and quantity of sleep because if you sleep seven hours at least per day, that will promote your memory, motivation, speed of decision-making. It has huge effect on bunch of cognitive skills. Number two, if you have a difficult problem that you need to solve, go to bed. Sleep starts so-called inspirational or insight process and decision will come as if by itself. Number three, sleep in the mode that your body prefers. Stop chasing for the trend of early mornings if you know that you work better if you go to bed late and wake up late. Last but not least is providing yourself with a healthy sleep, which means you need to not consume caffeine four hours before going to bed. You need to try to block the blue screen on your smartphones and laptops. You need to try to ventilate your bedroom before going to bed. You need to use your bedroom only for sleep, not for watching series, or surfing social networks. Okay, this is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. All the resources would be listed in the description of the video where I have actually included a small sleep diary which will help you to organize your sleep. Thank you again for watching and make sure to comment and subscribe. See you next week. Bye.